I had finished recording videos for the day, I was getting ready to settle down and do something that wasn't working, and then this story dropped. And I had to get this out as quickly as possible. So OBS over the years has basically become the de facto standard for recording and streaming video. I guess except for those weirdos who still use XSplit and PewDiePie who I think uses Camtasia. But all of the sane people, we use OBS. And OBS, it is a free software project. It is licensed under the GPL v2. And while I do complain about it because, you know, it's not perfect, it's better than everything else out there. And it's certainly better than all of the other free software alternatives. But OBS exists in two versions. OBS, the open broadcaster software, and Streamlabs OBS. I believe Streamlabs OBS is only available on Windows. I don't think it's even got a macOS version. Streamlabs OBS is a fork of OBS that rebuilt its UI in Electron for some reason. It's a more streamer-centric version with, you know, Twitch integration, other things that streamers might want to see. It is obviously very popular on Twitch, but it also sees a lot of usage on YouTube as well. Now, considering the name, I and many other people had assumed that Streamlabs OBS was a partnership with OBS because they have OBS in their name, obviously they must be connected. But it turns out that wasn't the case. And recently, like a couple of hours ago recently, some drama happened with Streamlabs and looking further into them, they actually seem like a really scummy company. Everything I'm going to say is going to be allegedly, none of this has been 100% confirmed. So recently, as in yesterday, Streamlabs announced a new product called Streamlabs Studio. This is focused around improving your streams from your console because I guess console streaming is a thing that some people do now. Now, there is a separate product called Lightstream. They are a competitor to Streamlabs Studio, but do basically the same functional job. Now, Lightstream existed first. And Streamlabs Studio recently made their website public. And their website looks a little bit familiar. So, um, on the left, we have the Lightstream website. On the right, we have the Streamlabs Studio website. Now, these look very similar. In fact, so similar that it has the same text. So similar, in fact, that if we scroll down to the testimonials, uh, Lightstream is literally one of the greatest things I've ever discovered. Thank you so much for making it so easy. Streamlabs Studio is literally one of the greatest things I've ever discovered. Thank you so much for making it easy. Love this platform. Love how they listen to their community. Love this platform. Love how they listen to their community. Love this platform. Love how they listen to their community. It is the perfect platform for console streaming. The only difference between these testimonials is the name they used. These are actually real testimonials. The people who uh, who said these have come out on Twitter. These ones, well, all of this allegedly is the same site. And they admitted there was a mistake. But the way they admitted there was a mistake, um, well, we made a mistake. Text on the landing page was placeholder text that went into production by error. This is our fault. We removed the text as soon as we found out. Our intended version is now live. Lightstream team is great and we've reached out directly to them to apologize. Now, I'm no web designer, okay? I'm no web designer. But I don't think that when you make placeholder text, you literally copy what is on your competitor's site. Typically, you'll use something like lorem ipsum, or you'll just fill it with just saying, but a lot. That's what you'll do. Not this. Not this. But hey, maybe there's something that I don't know. Now, if it was just this, I wouldn't be making a video. I don't care that much about them copying a website. But in the context of what they've done to OBS, this makes them seem a little bit more scummy. So... Near the launch of Slobs, that being Streamlabs OBS, it's honestly a great name. <laughs> Streamlabs reached out to us about using the OBS name. We kindly asked them not to. They did so anyway and followed up by filing a trademark. 
We've tried to sort this out in private and they've been uncooperative at every turn. The trademarks in question being these ones here from General Workings Inc. Now, not all of these are related to Streamlabs OBS. They have some other products, but this one right here is Streamlabs OBS. Then we also have this one here for slobs and then the image trademark as well. Now, this is a very important trademark, and we'll get back to this in just a bit. Now, expectedly, this naming has led to a lot of confusion amongst both the Streamlabs OBS and the regular OBS users. I, for the longest time, as I mentioned earlier, thought that Streamlabs OBS was a partnership between the two projects. And if you go to the OBS forums, you will very frequently see people asking about Streamlabs OBS or people suggesting Streamlabs OBS as a solution to an OBS problem. There is obviously confusion about the features between the two projects, and if you ask about features, you'll see people being confused why some features are missing from one project and not the other. Streamlabs OBS also has a premium feature, and apparently the OBS team has received angry emails demanding refunds if there was like an overcharge or something like that, when they have absolutely no control over how Streamlabs charges for their service. Along with companies trying to contact them about partnerships and various other businessy things that are confused about the difference between the two projects. When it comes to the OBS codebase, at least going by my limited legal knowledge, Streamlabs is entirely in the clear to be using that as the base for their project. I've seen some people saying, oh, they stole the OBS code. That's not how this works at all. It was licensed under a license that allows Streamlabs to build off of that, and the new aspects of Streamlabs OBS are licensed under GPL v3. They're entirely clear to be using that, even when it comes to the premium features. Using GPL v2, v3, doesn't matter what you're using, does not stop you adding additional features that are locked behind a paywall. That's perfectly fine. I don't care to use it, but when it comes to the legality, it does seem to be perfectly okay. Now, while I'd love to completely trash Lab and say, oh, OBS should just go and sue them, that wouldn't be entirely fair, because while I think this is incredibly scummy, OBS did make a massive, massive mistake. So OBS did file a trademark. So let's go over to that one right now. That was filed by, I love this name, uh, Wizards of OBS LLC. So they filed a trademark for open broadcaster software, for the logo they are using, and also for OBS. The OBS trademark is the one that's important here. Streamlabs isn't using Streamlabs open broadcaster software. So then, OBS. There's a slight problem with this trademark. This is a abandoned trademark or failed to respond. So they filed this in 2019 in May. Okay, keep that date in your mind. Let's have a look at Streamlabs OBS. They filed this in 2019 in February. This is where OBS seriously made a mistake. So OBS has been around for about nine years. It initially started as a project for the developer to go and record his StarCraft gameplay. But it wasn't a really big project for a very long time, so I guess he never bothered to file a trademark. Then Streamlabs showed up on the scene, and before they got to file a trademark, filed it under them. So they responded trying to file their own trademark, and it seems like that failed. I don't like that Streamlabs did this, and I think morally they are absolutely in the wrong. This is a horrible thing to do to one of your competitors, especially when your entire project is built on top of their project. But I think when it comes to the legality, Streamlabs may be the rightful holder of that name, as ridiculous as that sounds. And judging by what OBS has said, I very much doubt they've ever contributed back upstream either, let alone even just donating to the project. From what it sounds like, they're just trying to say, we are Streamlabs OBS. OBS, well, we'll just take the traffic from their, their searches and from people trying to look up OBS, but we don't really care about what's happening upstream, we're just going to do our own thing. But that may not be the only things they've pinched in the past. So this has sort of been apparently an open secret for a couple of years now that Streamlabs, when 
you know, some new product shows up on the scene, they're basically going to copy it and then claim that they were the ones who came up with the idea. So back when uh, Twitch introduced the bit system, the like donate system, there was a small creator who created a bit cup thing, like a thing to see all of your bits on the screen. They just went and joined that. They basically joined the Elgato Stream Deck app, and outside of nabbing other features like that, uh, there was a problem back in 2019 where I was automatically subscribing people to their donation service and just taking money out of their account without them, you know, explicitly saying, sign me up for this service. Now that got fixed a long time ago, but it just adds into the pile. Now, I don't use Streamlabs OBS because, well, I'm a Linux user and I, I can't, so I use the base version of OBS. That's fine, I don't have anything to swap out there. But I do use the Streamlabs website to do their stream integrations, where I can do things like integrate my chat, I can have alerts on my screen, so if someone does like a tip, they follow me, they do a raid, basically it lets me have alerts on my screen. I am no longer using Streamlabs to do my alerts. Luckily, there is a direct competitor to Streamlabs that does everything that Streamlabs does, and more, and doesn't charge you for basic features. That being Stream Elements. And I'm not the only one who has migrated over to Stream Elements. It seems like a lot of streamers have started to do so. So, uh, this is one of, you know, it's a small time streamer, like no one's ever heard of her, Pokimane, uh, sort of like on the website for Streamlabs. She's probably going to move off if they don't deal with this problem. You also have another small streamer, no one's ever heard of him, Hassan. He's probably going to boycott it as well. Much smaller streamer, but I just want an excuse to mention her. Fruit is also going to be boycotting it. I know that Barnacles and Ricky Berwick are also going to be leaving it. Harris Heller has been trashing it. And I wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of other streamers start trashing it within the next day as well. I can't tell you what's going to happen between the recording of this and when it goes live, but... Keep an eye out because I wouldn't be surprised if Streamlabs is about to burn to the ground. This is still very much a developing story and I expect more information to come out over the next couple of days. But at this stage, I am encouraging everyone who is using Streamlabs OBS to switch to the base version of OBS. If you need some extra Streamlabs OBS features, there are plugins that are going to do 99% of what you want. And if you're using Streamlabs for your stream integrations, switch over to Stream Elements. It'll take a bit of time to set up. The interface is very different and the way you work with it is very different. But everything you want to do, for the most part, is going to be in Stream Elements as well. Now, I want to make this very clear. I am focusing my annoyance on Streamlabs. If your favorite streamer decides, I don't really care about all this drama, I'm going to keep using Streamlabs, it doesn't really matter to me, do not harass that streamer. They are free to use whatever they want, and that's perfectly fine. If they want to move over to Stream Elements and move over to base OBS, that's great. But do not harass people who decide they don't want to do that. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Who do you think is in the right? Is it Streamlabs? Is it OBS? Do you just not care and you just want streams to be good and you don't really care what people are using in the background? That's perfectly fair as well. So that's going to be pretty much it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay link in the comment description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea, where I'm almost certainly going to be talking about this on the next episode. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.